Well, hello, and welcome to the Waking Up Spiritually podcast. I'm Wendy Rose Williams, and with Greg Kirk, we are so happy to welcome you to uh, today's topic. I can be reached via my website at wendyrosewilliams.com. And what I do is I am a past life energy healer, and I help people release energy that no longer serves them, including chronic pain, anxiety, and depression, and just getting you moving again in a better, more positive way when you're feeling super stuck. There seems to be a lot of that going on uh, recently. And again, that website is wendyrosewilliams.com to request a complimentary 15-minute phone appointment with me. And you can find Waking Up Spiritually podcast at wakingupspiritually.com. Or please follow us on YouTube or via your favorite podcast app. So I'll turn it over to Greg to introduce himself and today's topic. And again, welcome. We're so glad you're with us. Hi, I'm Greg Kirk. You can find me. I have a personal website at <clears throat> my name, gregkirk.com. But my first name is spelled G-R-E-G-G -G, and last name is K-I-R-K. -K. So G-R-E-G-G-K-I-R-K.com. -G -K and I uh, am an energy worker as well. I do um, hands-on healing. I, I'm trained in Reiki and Theta healing, and I do um, remote healing as well. And uh, like Wendy, looking for blocks to help people um, get their physical health or their emotional health or their energetic health in, in line as they, as, they, uh, as they need. I also run <clears throat> um, weekly online group healing circles every Sunday afternoon at noon. And I also run periodic um, or host, I should say, periodic uh, fire circles here in the Connecticut area where I live. So those, you can check those out on my events link. Um, and the online group healing circles we meet, uh, it's only $20. So if this is something you want to dip your toe in the water and participate in a guided meditation channeling session, it's really fun. So, and Greg, um, those are at noon Eastern on Sundays. Is that right? Yes. Noon okay. Eastern on Sunday. So, and we, we've been like, we've had, uh, we just had somebody from Israel join us a couple weeks ago. So they're oh, how wonderful. From all over the country or all over the world. I mean. So today, Wendy and I, you know, we, Wendy and I, um, it's been about two years, a little over two years that we started this, this broadcast, these, this program, Waking Up Spiritually. Wendy and I felt that um, it was something that was needed. There's a lot of people that we noticed who were waking up spiritually and who were having a hard time, having a hard time mainly with their own personal issues. Like, am I crazy? Uh, I don't have really anybody to talk to about this, this, this kind of stuff. Well, today's topic is what happens when you wake up spiritually and others don't? So the people around you, your support group, your family, your friends, they're not waking up. So that can really make you feel disjointed in your life, in your lifestyle, as well as maybe like an outcast, maybe like you're not, maybe you're not sane anymore. So we want to talk about that today. What happens when you wake up spiritually and I'm sorry, I'm getting this, uh, I need to get this shared. Here we... And well, what Greg's doing for those of you who are listening and not watching is he's bringing up a PowerPoint. So you're so welcome to listen, but you also can go to wakingupspiritually.com and click on the broadcast tab and everything is wonderfully uh, described and archived there as well as on the YouTube channel. And then you get the visual component to it also. Right. I'd also like to... Just pay attention to the numerology today. We're 10, 10, 22. Some good numbers there <laughs> for those of you uh, interested in that. So let's start with um, what are the symptoms of this situation where you're waking up and other people aren't? It starts with you and your friends stop agreeing on forms of entertainment, books, and movies. Some of the things that maybe you had been interested in a while ago, kind of the quote unquote normie <laughs> pastimes of whatever, watching certain movies, watching entertainment, sporting events, things like that, just uh, don't resonate with you as, as much. Um, you feel less compelled to spend time with certain people now and more inclined to spend it with others or possibly alone. So if you're lucky enough to find somebody who's like-minded, that's great. But more often than not, we're, I think the situation is People you grew up with, you know, people you went to school with, people you work with, suddenly you're finding less and less things in common. And you're not 
really compelled to gravitate and hang out with them because it can be a kind of a energy losing proposition. Even if you're not arguing about stuff with which hopefully you're, you're not, it just hanging out with somebody can be a form of drudgery that where you would rather be doing something else, something exciting, something that kind of sets your soul on fire in a good way. Uh, you also, this is the where the rubber meets the road, you start having experiences that only a small circle of friends will understand. So that's kind of like what causes this. You know, you're, you're having whatever you want to call it, paranormal, supernatural experiences, or just even intuitive hits. And your friends are just not even remotely interested in that stuff. Mm -hmm. You bring it up and they maybe they'll say something, you know, to you. Like, are you losing your mind? Ha ha, you know, or make a joke out of it. That, that doesn't feel good. So also, you know, like I said, you, you are having these experiences, but you begin to notice. You can't say certain things to most of your friends and family members. So they, and then finally, you just start thinking, well, maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> maybe I'm losing my mind. Maybe I don't belong here. You know, you start having those feelings. So these are all normal for us waking up types. <laughs> so just want to let you know, this is kind of the landscape of the situation. So we're going to talk about what to do about this. But if, you know, I think they used to have medicine commercials back, back in the day, like, here's all the symptoms. If you have any of these, then you might need this medicine. Well, if you, if any, if you check off any of these bullet points, and these have happened to you, then stay tuned. We're going to talk about what to do about it. Wendy and I have been through this ourselves. And Wendy, what, what do you have to say about this? Slide. Well, I think you're making me think of with with that great comment about the commercials and and the RX. The prescription is often be alone and be in nature, and there you've got the perfect yeah. <laughs> you've yeah. got the perfect image for it. And also, yeah. Greg, with your comments, you reminded me that we did the podcast on paranormal experiences. So that's yep. something that people may want to go back and look in the archives for that, um, because that can really um, help. Also, of just just explaining what's going on and just getting comfortable with things are different and just not fitting in in the mold anymore, not fitting in the cookie cutter. Um, and that's OK. Yeah. Right. Good point. We did a, an episode called Paranormal uh, Experiences that um, we've got a lot of documented documentation. We got some photographs and we've got some video. That can't be just explained by normal, <laughs> by normal methods, and it, it it's cool, you know. So if you want to use that episode to kind of show some of your friends and family and say, look, you know, these people seem sane, or maybe hopefully they think we're sane, and look at what they're showing. That's 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 a good step. Um, yeah, it, but let's face it, you know, th this is uh, this is something that I I, I think about every now and then. Um, so many people in this life are in this, they don't think outside of the fact that, that, you know, they went to school, now they're working a job and they're going to their job and they're coming home and they're watching TV or videos or whatever. And then that's it. And then they do that again every, every day. <laughs> Nobody's thinking about the fact that we're on this rock hurtling through space. <laughs> we're all these spiritual beings, you know, having this experience and there's a lot of us who are, our consciousness is leaking out of that situation and we're becoming aware of there's more to life than just going to school, working a job and coming home and drinking a beer. <laughs> so, um, yeah. You're making me think of Hamlet's favorite quote, there's more on heaven and earth Horatio than is dreamt of in your philosophy. So it's just tying in with just, I think, us tuning into our own truth and just slowing down and quieting down enough to be able to hear that whisper of our soul and hear what our heart uh, wants and needs. Because often we're so busy being human doings that we've just, we've lost that part. Right. I, I think ultimately what it breaks down to somebody who's waking up spiritually, somebody who's becoming curious about their place in the universe. And they, they're not satisfied with this 
go to school, go to work, come home and do it again uh, routine and not not wondering like, wait a minute, why am I here? You know, how did the earth get formed? You know, these basic questions you have when you're a kid. Like, you know, why is the sky blue? How, how, how did air, where did that come from? And, you know, so it, it's, I think it's just the generally curious people start to have these questions. And then a lot of times that opens up, opens the door to having some experiences. So let's talk about what to do after you've started to experience this. So I recommend, first thing is to analyze, you know, that the, the Analyze yourself first. Um, look at everyone in this situation, and and don't don't judge. So when look at everyone as a mirror, what irritates you about a certain person might be a reflection of something that you need to work on. So look in these situations where if somebody comes at you and just shuts you down and or has a criticism about you, what is it about that particular situation that triggers you? Seriously, look at it. Do some internal analysis. And try to pull yourself out of the situation and realize, first of all, they're, they're in a different place than you. And, it, and you're not better than them. <laughs> you know, you might feel superior because you're having this experience and they're not. They probably feel the other way around. They probably feel like you're, you've lost your, your, your marbles <laughs> and they're better than you. So whatever. It's all about perspective for one thing, but you, it's for those who are really on a spiritual journey, you realize you're, you've got a place in this universe. Nobody's better than anybody else. There's no judgment. So what is it, if you want to spiritually advance, maybe you look into these kinds of triggers of that's bringing up something in you that maybe you need to work on and release. So with every so-called negative interaction, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Why does it trigger me? What can I do about it? And just a general recommendation that if you feel something or have something that is a trigger, pull it up in your, your, your consciousness and, and just look at it. <laughs> Even if it's a fear, it's something that's really irritating, bring it up and ask it, you know, what are you here to teach me? Sit with it for a while. And, it, you know, the answer may be some deep down stuff that you really don't want to deal with. Maybe you've been avoiding it. But if you can actually address it, that's how you release the demons. That's how you release these energy blocks and just send them up to be transmuted into love, light, and healing and let all of it go. But <clears throat> running away from these things, defending yourself, yelling back at somebody, all this stuff, this is the way to keep, that's the way to keep this negative energy going. You don't want that. You're, the, the best recommendation is to get this stuff unwound, to let it go, and understand the importance of forgiveness and how it unwinds karma, not just for, for you, and the, it, but also for the per, person who's involved in it. And then finally, you know, it's all right to lose your cool every now and then. I mean, let's face it, we're human beings. We're here to experience emotions. So pushing emotions down is not always the best thing every time. It's it's good to be in control of your emotions. It's good to be balanced in your approach to things. But hey, I, I was just telling people in the online group healing circle a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I flipped someone off in traffic, <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm trying to walk the walk and talk the talk. I got mad at somebody losing their, their temper at me and they were honking at me and they wouldn't stop. So I just you know, held up the universal finger to, to tell them to stop. And then when it was over, I felt so bad about it, right? So I felt bad. I'm like, what am I doing? I know better than that. Um, so first of all, just realize it's not the end of the world. You can restart. And what did I do? I, when I got home, I saw the person's face, you know? So I sent love to that person. I did the, my best because here was what bothered me more than anything. When you have an interaction like that with someone and it's negative, they're, they're walking away with that energy and now they're going to infect other people, right? So we don't want that. We want a place where everybody's, you know, exhibiting loving kindness. So the best thing to do is obviously have good interactions with people and then they pay it forward with their good interactions and eventually it comes back to you. So in that situation, I flipped a guy off. I went home. 
I sent that person love is honest love, sincere love from my heart to that person. And I thought, and I know that that got to him and it diffused him, hopefully, and maybe it made him softer towards other people. So there we go. There, there, so that's what you can do in these situations that get heated. And it's, I'd say just the overall you know, advice on this is listen, just be present with everyone. Give them a break. They're doing the best they can, even though some of them don't seem like it. And just, you know, be aware of the triggers and and really honestly ask yourself, what is it in that's bothering you about the situation and really try to work on it? Wendy, what, what do you think? I think a lot of what you're describing, Greg, is embracing our shadow, um, that part of us that we least like and try and deny or fuss with or shove away or just try and shove it down into the into a, a box and, and not look at it. So I think the self-love that needs to come up through this um, is is really important in that self-acceptance. And perhaps that's our you know wonderful gift of middle age uh, and all the studies that show that people uh, often move into just a happier phase of life. And I saw a recent study that said the most productive decade, and this was surprising to me, of our lives is often in our 60s. And I just wow. thought that was that was wonderful. I would have guessed 30s, 40s, maybe yeah. 50s. I was not expecting to read 60s. Interesting. So there's just a lot to look forward to, um, you know, for, for many of us. And just finding that that center, I think, is what you're um, touching on too, Greg. It's just uh, loving and accepting ourselves so we then just can do that with others. It doesn't mean you tolerate bad behavior or terrible behavior, but you don't have to get destroyed by it. You can just kind of you know, set, set your boundary. That's not for me. And you can just remove yourself from, from those situations. So um, let's talk about embracing the differences. So let's face it, we're living on a planet where not everybody thinks the same thing. Not, very, not everybody even believes the same thing. But everybody is in your life for some kind of a reason. And it's better to look at um, all situations that you come across with um, the eye of it's a learning opportunity. So those, so if that is going to sound crazy to somebody who's not on a spiritual path, that's just going to sound like ah mumbo jumbo spiritual talk. But I think everybody who's who is awakening that hopefully will resonate with you that that's your point here. You're here to learn. You're here to advance. You're here to ascend. You're here to get better. Have a spiritual evolution here. So you do that by. Um, growing and and you know have it learning from your experiences the ones that you didn't like how can you change that because those things tend to repeat until you learn the lesson so understand that every person no matter how dull seeming has something to teach you i, I was actually as a graphic i was going to show the um the poem by max airman uh desiderata he actually talks about that you familiar with that wendy desiderata? i'm not uh I'll, maybe I'll include it in the comments when we post this on Facebook or maybe uh, wherever we post on YouTube and so forth. It's a really cool <laughs> poem where basically it says it's more or less this. Like every person, every person is a child of the universe. Every person has their story. Even the person who's, you know, dull seeming, they have something to teach you. Everyone has something to teach you. Even, you know, the, everyone. So I, I don't even want to get into going into different types of people. Everyone has something to teach you, even people who you think are dull seeming. Maybe they're trying to teach you about patience. You know, it's always a lesson. So every situation, again, no matter how dull seeming or, or painful, same thing, has something to teach you. And then, you know, finally, you this this is actually right out of the poem, Desiderata. You have a right to be here. Your, your soul is as perennial as the grass and and so you have as much a right to be here as everyone. And so don't, 
it, don't go inward on this and think, oh, I'm a weirdo and I, I shouldn't be with these people and I shouldn't be in this situation. You have every right, every right to be here as much as a tree, as much as the rocks, as much as the ocean. You know, you're here. Yeah, let's face it, you're, you're not going anywhere for any, any period of time. You're here and you deserve to be here and you're actually here to play a role. So again, let's get into the spiritual aspect. You're here to do something. And we've got um, broadcasts about, you know, what's your purpose in life? So check that one out. But you're here to do something. You're here to learn. And, and you know, we'll cut a little bit to the chase on that episode. You're here to live life. You're here to just have an experience. So you can't screw that up. Just by living, you're having an experience. You're fulfilling the role. You're doing it. <laughs> so that's your, your role. That's your right. So just know that. Take some pressure off of yourself. Live your life. Enjoy it. And just realize that everybody, you know, they, every, you know everybody, a little rain's going to fall. Sometimes it's, <laughs> it's a monsoon. But those are your experiences to learn from. And like I said earlier, you're going to, these things tend to come in cycles. So when they come and you don't react in a, in a positive way, they're going to come back again until you, you get it right the next time. The beautiful thing is you, you got another chance. Um, but once you get it right, then you move on and things kind of smooth out for a while, but there's going to be another one. Just know this is the way life is. So, <laughs> you know, embrace that. It's the people who are kicking and screaming that are having the, the worst time and all this. So practice loving detachment, practice mercy, grace, and loving kindness. And, you know, if, if those seems like words of Pollyanna, you know, you're, you're, these are perennial words. These are the, the words of, of mastery. And, um, you know, the, the masters talk about this, you know, treating everyone with grace and love. That is... A heightened state of being. So it's, it's, it's a tall order to achieve when you're in traffic uh, or <laughs> standing in line at Walgreens, but this is what we're here to, to work out. So Wendy, your thoughts. Greg, could you speak more to uh, some examples perhaps of loving detachment? Are you speaking about the concept of observing versus absorbing other people's emotions, for instance, or or what, what do you mean by loving detachment? How would you well, see that in daily life? Yeah. At Walgreens yeah, so, or in traffic? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, not so much in that situation. But yeah, loving detachment is a concept um, that uh, I've learned about. Um, this is a high, kind of a higher, this is more of a level of mastery kind of thing. So yeah, we're here to have experiences. We're here to fall in love and so forth. Um, the the the, the masters start to move up into a state of, of loving detachment. So they don't get bogged down in the comings and goings of, of their loved ones, you know, so they don't pass judgment on them at all. They just let them be. They help them when they, you know, when the help is being asked, they don't intervene in their lives. They hold space for them. Mm -hmm. It's a much different way of thinking than <laughs> we're all kind of taught to, to be like, oh, you gotta, you have kids, you gotta get all involved in their life, or you know, your friend, you gotta, oh, they're not doing the right thing. You gotta get involved and tell them what to do. Loving detachment doesn't do that. You let the person have the experiences they're meant to have. Your intervention a lot of times will, you know, slow down their development, believe it or not. So not everyone, it's not your job to fix people. And sometimes um, these people need to fall and have have a, an experience that looks you know, tragic on the outset, but they're the ones who need to pick themselves up. So be there, you know, when they're, when they ask for it, of course, give them love and mercy and, and loving kindness when they ask for it. But it's a form of judgment where you think, ah, it's my role to fix everybody, or it's my role to fix all my friends. I know best. You have no idea. You have nobody. Well, that's, that's, that's ego. That's ego not being yeah. balanced. Yeah, exactly. But the loving detachment goes all the way to another state of being where um, it's hard for people to die. <laughs> okay, we're getting into higher level concepts now. When you have all of these energetic att attachments to the earth. So, you know, one of them is material possessions. If you're really in love with your material possessions, that's a connection to the earth. Okay. It even goes to, towards people. 
believe it or not. And I know that's this may sound like a foreign concept to some people like, oh, well, I'm here to have great relationships. And I love, you know, my family or my dog or whatever. Of course you do. But it is, can you get to a state? And I'm talking the level of mastery. So again, this is going to sound foreign to some people, but can you get to a level of mastery where you still love all of those people, but you are okay with letting them go? Because mm -hmm. then you'll have, a, you'll have an ascended death. You won't be attached to anything. You'll zip right out. Won't be a big problem. And your heart would be light. They, they, there's the, they had this belief in Egypt that, you know, when you die, they would weigh your heart. And if your heart is heavy, you wouldn't go to eternity. But if your heart is light, so your heart's going to be light if you're not attached to anything on earth. It's, again, this is a high-level concept. But this is, this is more advanced mastery stuff. And I think it's a cool thing to talk about. It cool is. That's, that's great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for asking about it, because I think it's I think it's important to, for people to understand it. And, um, you know, again, like some people will hear and say, what? You know, you tell me, you know, I shouldn't be attached to my wife or my whatever husband. <laughs> I'm just saying, of course, be attached to them, live, you know, enjoy and live that life with them. But, you know, at some point, can you get to a level of mastery where you still love them? But, you know, you can let them go. Can, that, that's not like, easy. It sounds like the concept of holding space for someone very mm -hmm. powerfully when someone is struggling. And it's not telling them what to do, but it's just really extending love to them and telling them you believe in them. And you're just going to support them in whatever decision or process they have to go through. Yeah. So it feels like that might be a part of that. A bit, yeah. Well, you know, also happens, it comes with grief and things like that. So, you know, if you lose any of these people, are you going to be devastated? Well, yeah, of course. But if you get to this level of mastery, you realize that they're not gone. I mean, they're gone physically, but they're not, they're, they're still there. And if you have a great sense of meditation and channeling and things like that, you can communicate with them. Energy so, can't be destroyed. It can only change form, as as Einstein proved. Right, and and you know every every situation where I've done an energy session on somebody who's passed, you know, and I'm doing a you know a session with somebody who's grieving, the, the, the consciousness comes back and says, "Tell them to stop grieving. <laughs> it's making them sick. It's it's you know they're they're getting too upset and it's they're it's not healthy for them. I'm fine. I'm over here fine." They're mm -hmm. the ones I'm worried about them. And, and meanwhile, right, the right. person is like, oh, I'm worried about my loved one who passed on. No, they're fine. They're always fine. So, you know, can you get to a level of mastery where somebody passes and you're like, I love that person. I had so many good memories and now they're in such a great place. I'm happy for them. I'm happy that they're OK and and just not have that grief attachment or any kind of negative energy draining attachment. That's, that's what I'm talking about by this loving detachment. So that that's, is a better way of being. Is it achievable um, for everyone? I don't, maybe not, but it, it's just, I'm just bringing it up as a goal to strive for. So, <laughs> all right, let's move on. Wonderful. All right. Well, we know we have to feel the feels to be able to release the emotions, because if we try and deny your emotions or shove them away or just um, not, not really feel it, it's going to crop up in different times and ways at the most inconvenient time. <laughs> and we're just going to, we're just going to snap or turn into just a puddle um, at that, at that moment. So what is really going on when we are waking up and going through these profound changes that can feel fascinating and amazing and wonderful to us, but also can feel kind of uh, scary at times or very, very different. Um, it can feel like it wasn't something we were looking for necessarily. And we have to, we have to adjust because we're coming, we're coming um, unwound in some ways. And you might feel lonely, uh, misunderstood. There can be estrangement um, from loved ones that really can be painful. Uh, so you wanna be gentle with yourself and, and kind with yourself. And I think learning how to go within 
to embrace your deepest truths and be comfortable being you, I think that's a skill set that's often missing. Uh, unless someone has a daily spiritual practice or was was raised or has learned or taught themselves how to do this, um, that that skill set can be missing. And let's let's just call a spade a spade here. You may need to choose between really living your purpose, really embracing your purpose versus maintaining those old relationships with family, with friends, or even your spouse or partner, because you have outgrown it. And it might have been for, that relationship might have been for a reason or for a season, but you might've thought it was for a lifetime. And those things can still be true because it's just technically your life hasn't ended, but that phase of your life has ended in a powerful way. So you're just, you're just leveling up. Certainly you can reach around you and, you know, reach a handout to others, just like you're being given a hand up uh, by others who are just doing great and really steady um, on their path. Certainly you can work with, work with a healer, work with a spiritual teacher, et cetera. And that can really help and can really help normalize the new world for you when it just feels like it just, it can feel like just a lot of loss and a lot of chaos and a lot of confusion. So that's what we're here for. I mean, that's why we're right back to the core mission of this podcast is how can we help support and help normalize waking up spiritually? We're right back to our core, our core mission. And you may feel some frustration um, from needing to or choosing to filter uh, so much of your newly expanded reality versus what's going to be accepted in daily conversation. I know I drove my friends insane. Uh, I have some lovely friends who did stay with me, and I was absolutely oversharing my excitement about energy healing and past life regression and afterlife communication and anything and everything. And I would see their eyes glaze over and you should know you've, you've held the floor for long enough, but I was just so excited. I would keep going and was kind of surprised why other people weren't into it um, like I was. So I had to <laughs> learn to uh, reel myself in and I did lose some friends um, and some other friends did say to me when I got off the all spiritual channel uh, and found my uh, center um, a little bit, a little bit better again, even though it was really a very different, um, a very different me and a very different reality. And they said, oh my goodness, Wendy, we're so glad you corrected from that. <laughs> I, I was about ready to be done because it was just, it was too much. It was just too much. So uh, we may need to be, we may need to be filtering in an appropriate way. And finding ways to build new communities and to attract like-minded friends, that's a really big deal. And then when you've got those places, like joining Greg and I in Waking Up Spiritually on Facebook or some of the other groups that I belong to, uh, including Wisdom Soup and Spiritual Awakenings International, there you can just be the full woo. You can be the full woo-woo and just bring up anything and everything and all of a sudden the conversation switches from mermaids to astral travel to this crazy sounding past life. And it's all like, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I found my, my new people. <laughs> <laughs> so you certainly can do that because uh, I believe we're, we're meant to, to show the way when you're just wonderfully centered and you feel like you're really living your purpose and communicating with the divine and you're in integrity, but just so respectful of others, so loving of others, non-judgmental, because they get to choose their path. Um, you know, way, way shower is not about um, putting yourself above other people or proselytizing or trying to um, be bossy pants and telling them what they should be doing. It, it's quite the opposite. It's, I think it's back to Greg's point about that loving detachment um, and just, just holding space um, for people. And Lucille Ball had a wonderful quote uh, to love yourself first 
and everything else falls into line. And I think that can be quite a foreign concept to many of us who were not taught to love ourselves first. And many, many uh, clients that I work with, their solar plexus chakra is just not happy. And that is the seat of the self, S-E-L-F, -E meaning our self-love, our self-respect, uh, our, our good boundaries, and then just getting that, of course, you know, linked up with our heart and, and with the rest of us. But um, it can feel it can feel selfish. Um, I'm putting selfish in quotes because I don't agree with that, but I, I do understand why that can feel selfish because we can have been socialized very differently. I had a wonderful client um, a day or two ago, and he did an incredible job in the healing temple. The first thing we do is bring in a series of colored healing lights. And he did fantastic. I think he brought in a new record for the number of healing lights that came up. And after about maybe 30 of them, he started saying, oh my gosh, I feel really selfish. And I had to stop him and say, what exactly do you feel selfish about? You're healing yourself so you can feel better be better, do better, have more energy, and choose to uplift others. You know, what, what is selfish about that? But he just, it was really interesting. And I was really glad he was vulnerable enough to say, I feel selfish because I'm getting this much healing for myself. Yeah, so love yourself first. It's a, it's a great, it's a great quote. Okay. Oh, so I would uh, love. Oh, Greg, any comments on that? I, I did. I, I, I don't. I guess I changed the slide. There, I, <clears throat> I was, I was going to piggyback on you had made a comment earlier about oversharing, <clears throat> and uh, I thought I included it in one of my Wendy pieces. on the All Woo Woo channel. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So went through the same thing, and here's what I've noticed about that. It, and there's a. I got this idea from a guy named David Wilcock, who's uh, he's a woo woo practitioner <laughs> or whatever he, he uh, disclosure groups you know about ufos and so forth so he said something interesting about the law he calls it the law of 10 percent. so you know here's what what you do when 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 you're talking to somebody and you're just having quote-unquote normal conversations and then somebody says makes a comment about something unusual like supernatural like maybe they talk about a ufo or maybe they talk about ghosts or whatever yeah, just a small thing these kind of things come up in normal conversations i'd say relatively frequently so it's that is not your doorway to jump in with guns blazing you know and just say i know all this stuff no 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 the law it of wasn't set up for your personal monologue <laughs> right, right. It's overwhelming. Nobody wants that. I mean, do you want that? No, no. What, what if you had you know brought up spark plugs and then now this person works you know as a mechanic and then he just overflows with all the knowledge he knows about you know building cars and working on them. You don't want that. So same with you. So if that little doorway is open, be respectful and just ten percent, ten percent of the information you know. Give them 10%. Like, here's what I, oh, you know what? It's funny you brought that up. Well, I know a little bit about this. Here's what I think, blah, 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 10%. Then wait. <laughs> Don't try to eat the whole elephant one bite, you know, just one little here. Have this serving. How did you do? Oh, don't really want to hear anymore. Okay. I know you really want to lay it on, <laughs> but restrain yourself. Let it go and just, you know, be content with that. You know, if you're lucky enough to maybe give another 10%, okay, but only little dribs and drabs and, and hold back. It's, you're more, you'll, you'll be more respectful and you'll have a better experience with the conversation because then they'll, if it's all about them asking, you know, then that, that's when you can, you can present the information and they're going to accept it. They're going to digest it. So that's, it never works when you <laughs> force feed someone. Uh, well, too, too much, you know. I think it's the art of having a great conversation, and I think mm. that's gotten uh, perhaps perhaps lost um, along the way. I think perhaps something's happened with social media that has just taken you know taken that out. You know, just like we used to 
write letters by hand and it was much more thoughtful and you had to wait for a response in the mail and it was a deal when you got a letter. Um, so, you know, just the rapid pace and how much information there is uh, flowing at us all the time, we've got to be really good, thoughtful consumers of that um, right. and just to, you know, keep that beautiful art of conversation and, and relatedness going um, in a fun, respectful way. Right. Okay, let's move to that slide now, Wendy. So I would love to invite everyone to some um, events that I've got. I've got a, a busy uh, second half of October. So please join me on Saturday, October 15th, uh, depending when you hear this podcast, of course, at 10 a.m. Um, Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern. I have the good fortune to be the featured speaker on Spiritual Awakenings International, and we'll be diving into past life mastery through archetypes. And you can go to spiritualawakeningsinternational.org and there you can sign up for the event. It'll be via Zoom. And I would love to see you there and just, um, just share in the conversation and, and post some questions. Thursday, October 27th, at 10 a.m. Um, Pacific, 1 Eastern, I will be on the Mundane to Magical um, Summit. Be having a live interview uh, with Louise uh, Matson in the UK. And again, we'll be talking about past life mastery uh, through archetypes. Then at four o'clock uh, Pacific, seven Eastern, again on Thursday, October 27th, I'm going to be the featured author at the IANS, uh, International Association for Near Death Studies Book Club. And you can go to IANS, I A N D S dot org, and uh, look for the, the book club um, on that date on October 27th. And we'll be diving into Regression Healing One, uh, which is my first book. Um, and it is a very powerful session um, that a client had where he experienced three past lives in a lot of detail. He learned how to connect with his higher self for the first time, and he learned how to connect with his guides much more powerfully than he'd done before. And all that got accomplished, and yet it had not addressed the main issue for the session, which was some significant uh, daily chronic pain. So we then went on another journey to two more lives. Uh, so, and he also summarized um, a bunch more. So it's really, it's, it's a lot of um, powerful breakthroughs in 150 pages. <laughs> it moves along pretty, pretty quickly. Friday, October 28th, four o'clock Pacific, seven Eastern. It's going to be the Meet Your Spirit Guide workshop. And with the belief that the uh, veil between worlds is the thinnest, October 31st, I mean, that's the, the point of, of um, Samhain, that's the point of Halloween and so many other uh, celebrations. It's just a perfect time to uh, meet your spirit guide. And you can get more information about these events on my website, uh, which is wendyrosewilliams.com. And just look on the events tab or uh, contact me uh, through there and I'll get to the information you need. And I would love to see you at these events. So please join me and also uh, love hearing what you'd like to hear more about what would be helpful to you, what's going on with you. Because that's how Greg and I certainly work to do the programming and the topics for waking up spiritually. And I also do with the events um, where either I'm running the workshop or where I'm, I'm the speaker at someone else's marvelous party. Really great, Wendy. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Please join us on November 21st for the next Waking Up Spiritually podcast. And join us in our Facebook group. Um, look for, you can search for Waking Up Spiritually and join us there. You can also go to our website that I mentioned earlier, which is wakingupspiritually.com and click on the broadcast link. And Greg did a beautiful job of really describing in a couple of sentences what each of the episodes has been about. So you can just skim through that and find the ones that are going to have some tips and techniques, perhaps a powerful guided meditation, um, or just something um, from us to, to help you with that, that topic. You can also go to our YouTube channel, 
And there's the link here for that. I will not try and pronounce or read that. We will get to a point where we've got enough subscribers and we can we can rename it uh, into uh, Waking Up Spiritually, uh, hopefully at some point. But you can look for the videos there. Please uh, rate and review us on Apple iTunes or whatever your favorite podcast is and subscribe there and subscribe on YouTube because then you'll know when a new one um, comes out. Check out Greg's website at G-R-E-G-G Kirk. K-I-R-K.com. And you can read about um, and join in on the healing circles that he does on Sunday. Learn about private sessions with Greg. I've had many of them. They're amazing. They're powerful. And it is incredible how you can get something squared away that was just so um, troubling, confusing, problematic in 30 to 35 minutes over the phone. It is just amazing. So highly recommend those sessions um, with Greg as well as the other things that he does. And please uh, request a complimentary 15 minute phone appointment with me at wendyrosewilliams.com. And the final tab is contact me. And again, you'll be surprised in that conversation how we might be able to start to get some things squared away before you even begin um, your sessions with me. I'll often uh, just be able to hear from my guides or from the client's guides, something to um, help them to recommend to suggest for them. Sometimes I'll do a clearing prayer for them or help them ground their energy or uh, tune into a chakra, you know, right during that complimentary phone call um, that, that does come up um, sometimes, as well as answering questions about the services I offer and how I might be able to help. So thank you so much for being here and we look forward to connecting next time. Bye-bye. See you, see you in November. Bye-bye.